Well, let's consider two popular amplifiers based on the op amp. I'll begin with uh, the style referred to as the inverting amplifier. Let me begin with the op amp symbol shown here. I connect the non-inverting terminal to ground. And then I use a resistor to connect the input signal called VN to the inverting terminal. I then have a resistor that serves as a feedback from the output back to the inverting terminal. I'll call that R2. So the output of the amplifier is V out. The amplifier gain is the ratio of the output to the input voltages. And it's only in terms of the resistor values. It's minus R2 divided by R1. Now with the negative sign there, the gain is always negative, no matter what your resistor choice is. For example, if we were to set both of these resistors to the same value R, we would have a gain of negative one. So one volt on the input would produce negative one volt on the output. So what we see from this is that the output always goes in the opposite direction of the input. If we look at the uh, ratio of resistors, we note that the magnitude can be less than one. In this case, the amplifier would serve as an attenuator. Let's look at, a, look at another popular amplifier style called the non-inverting amplifier. So in this case, I draw the amplifier, or the op amp, with its terminals in the other direction. Non-inverting terminal on top. We apply the input directly to the non-inverting terminal. We arrange the resistor network to have R1 going from the inverting terminal to ground. And then the feedback resistor R2 connects the output back to the inverting terminal. For this circuit, the gain is one plus the ratio R2 to R1. Now, if you study this equation for gain, you find that this value is always a positive number. We also see that with the one here, that it can never get less than one. For example, we could choose R2 equal to zero, making that ratio disappear, but we would still be left with a gain of one. So this one is uh, different in that its gain is always at least one. It's interesting to note here that if we let R1 go to an open circuit or have infinite resistance, the non-inverting amplifier in this case is normally called a voltage follower. And in this case, the output is equal to the input. The voltage follower has a gain of one. The equivalent or effective input resistance of an amplifier is an important consideration here as well. The input resistance seen looking into the input terminal can always be found by determining the ratio of the in applied input voltage divided by the current that flows, that is the input current. Now the nature of the op amp is such that its input current directly into a terminal is always zero or very, very close to zero. From this, we conclude that the input resistance is effectively infinite, or at least extremely high. And the non-inverting amplifier does not load its signal source. The situation is different for the inverting amplifier. We apply the same definition, Rn is equal to the applied input voltage divided by the current that flows. Now, how do we calculate In for this device? Well, again, the property of the op amp says that its terminal current is practically zero going in here. Also, when the device is operating in a negative feedback configuration, the differential voltage at the uh, op amp input is also very small or zero. So that tells us that we have zero volts at the inverting terminal. Well, we would then find that the current, 
get there in a second. The current IN is the voltage drop that appears across R1. And that's VN minus zero divided by R1. We see that VN divides out and we're left with simply R1. This is considerably different behavior from the non-inverting amplifier. So we see that this does in fact present a load to the signal source. 